Hey everybody, welcome to No Jumper News. It's Adam22 here with your man AD. Let's get right into these stories. So, first things first, Annalie Chapa. Over the past week, the young Memphis hip hop star has taken to social media to suggest that he's considering getting out of his recording contract with Warner Music and focusing on his developing of health and wellness businesses. Earlier this week, Chapa tweeted out, finna buy out my contract and become a full-time herbalist. Forget the music stuff, about to help my people. A few days later, he made further claims about the various cures his company was working on, promising that by the end of the year, I will have herbs that can cure herpes, gonorrhea, chlamydia, Media and even more STDs. He later added, I love when people think I'm incapable. I'm gonna show you how capable I am. Watch. I will have a herbal concoction by next week that will cure erectile dysfunction and also help a male sex life. Also a concoction that will treat insomnia and anxiety slash fear. Last year, Chopper released his mixtape from Dark to Light and announced the launch of his own NLE health and wellness line. That news followed his increased public awakening as a spiritually conscious new age convert. His health and wellness website lists a handful of products for sale, including NLE Chapa branded incense, sea moss, chlorophyll, and detox tea. This week, he also launched a separate Instagram account for his health and wellness line. Last month, he got the news that he allegedly helped cure a girl's cancer by recommending aromatic flowering plants in her diet. Wow, man, was just informed I helped cure someone from cancer. This is major to me. Hashtag thank God. It's funny because some people think I'm lying, which is understandable, but that's nowhere near the case. Curing disease is simple. It takes a meatless, dairy-free, sugar-free diet. Implant herbs, sea moss, black seed, neem, and other herbs. My mugwort was included in her diet. You know, this NLA Chapa thing puts me in a weird position because I adamantly believe that pretty much all of the herbal remedies that he's trying to sell here are just total pseudoscience and that they really don't do anything realistically um, and that this is just all cap. And, you know, it's one thing to act like, oh, like, you know, you take this pill and it's going to make you healthier or whatever in sort of a general sense. But it seems really nasty for him to be taking credit for uh, curing this girl's cancer. Uh, it reminds me of the Steve Jobs situation. Steve Jobs died from cancer because he chose to pursue a uh, herbal remedy type process instead of getting chemotherapy. Steve Jobs lost his life because of that. Now we have Enelie Chapa basically, I guess, like encouraging people to not pursue actual medical treatment for their problems and instead consume sea moss. I don't know. It's pretty nasty to me that people are even just tolerating him talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, I think he's going to make a return to rap at some point because I just can't imagine there's that much money in comparison to be made from selling herbs and spices. I think you need to do your research on Dr. Sebi. I have done my research on him, and you don't want to hear it. <laughs> we'll talk about that off camera. <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out Nick Cannon. You probably don't yeah. want me to talk about that on I camera. Mean, on some real shit, I take CMOS myself. It keeps me energized. Um, do I think that people should stop using Western medicine? I'm not going to sit there and be the person to tell you to do that shit. If I got a problem right now, I'm going straight to the hospital first thing. And whatever the fuck they give me, they give me. I'm going to keep a G. But um, there have been reports, and I don't know if it's true or not, but there have been a lot of reports of diseases and STDs being cured with herbs and medicine. I know um, Big Sean talked about he had a heart problem, and they said that he had, they had to operate on him, and his mom gave him magnesium. And he, he went back to the hospital and they said he didn't need surgery no more and he haven't had a heart problem since. So it's all type of shit. Yeah, I mean, anecdotes like that are nice, but I mean, there's no medical research that suggests that any of these things do any of the things that he's claiming that they do. The problem is, is that he's talking to an audience that isn't equipped with enough scientific knowledge to know that he's selling them pseudoscience. And, you know, I, I just, I consider it so cynical and so shitty. And it, it doesn't really compare to how nasty it was when Emily Chopper was saying that the vaccine would kill you and everything. I would hope that now we can see that, you know, the, the vast majority, 99.9% .9 of COVID related deaths are coming from people who aren't vaccinated right now. And we are seeing a lot of places all over the world, like Africa, that are being absolutely besieged by COVID right now. So many people dying because they have bad access to the vaccine scene uh it's just it's it's really bad i think for him to be promoting this kind of stuff to kids and i just wish that there was more people in the industry that were actually responsible enough that they'd be calling them out for it but then at the same time it just feels like the audience 
doesn't want to hear holes being poked in this fake science. Um, but you know, it's not it's not even just that. It's the fact that you know, as black people, we've been lied to, experimented on. You could look at the Tuskegee experiment if you want to do research on that shit too, where they were purposely given a syphilis and we were dying from that shit. And then it's all type of situations. So the trust when it comes to the government and scientists and the black community has been fucked up for a long time. They need to get back on track if they want to sit there and win us over. So it's not too far fetched for people to not want to fuck with this up. Yeah, but I mean, when he's talking about how he's created these herbs that are going to cure you of chlamydia. I don't know that. I mean, I've had chlamydia. You go to the doctor, they stick a needle in your ass for two seconds. Boom, it's gone. It's like, why, why do you need an herbal remedy to get rid of this? It's crazy. But, uh, you know, shout out to Chapa. I mean, I wish, I wish that he could... I don't know. I don't even know how to end that sentence. I, I, I wish him happiness and everything, but I also wish that he would stop selling this junk science to kids. I mean, that's just me. Next story. 6ix9ine is taking shots at Blueface again, this time over Blueface's new tattoo of his jeweler's name. This isn't the first time that the two have exchanged words. Blueface and 6ix9ine have been trading shots on social media for months now. Things ultimately came to a head after Blueface showcased the new tattoo on the side of his head dedicated to his favorite celebrity jeweler, NYC Luxury. 6ix9ine quickly left a few comments under the video posted on Instagram implying Blueface is broke and can't pay for his jewelry. He definitely owed them money for unpaid jewelry, leaving an additional NYC see luxury comment followed by crying a laughing emojis. Blueface later replied writing, you literally trying too hard to stay relevant. On his Instagram story, Blueface continued writing, kids hungry, daddy hungry, but you claim to walk around with so much money. That's a damn shame. Seemingly referring to a recent report claiming that 6 ix biological father is homeless and allegations from Sarah Molina saying that he doesn't provide for their daughter. He also followed up writing, stop talking like you getting money, bro. You clearly don't got it. Adding a few clips of 6 ix father and Sarah Molina. 6 ix ine proceeded to mock Blueface with his own video where he pretended to get a face tattoo because he couldn't pay for his chain. One hit wonder problems, he wrote alongside the clip shared to Instagram. After seeing the clip, Blueface clapped back, posting photos of Sarah Molina's injuries that she allegedly sustained after a domestic violence incident to his feet. In the caption, he wrote, beat a female up, but won't even mention a fight with me now. That's bitch ain't problems, tagging 6 9 in the post. According to reports, Blueface recently signed on for a bare knuckle boxing match set for July 23rd against TikTok comedian Kane Trujillo. Blueface took it a step further and followed up with a clip from 6 ix interview with The Shade Room where 6 ix admitted to assaulting Sarah Molina saying, I went into a rage. I blacked out. I beat the shit out of Sarah. I put my hands on her. In captioning the post, Blueface continued to call out 6 ix writing, tender dick problems. Beat me up since like you did with them females. 6 ix and Blueface's problems stem back to late March when Blueface called out 6 ix to be a troll while 6 ix was still in prison. Back in September, they traded shots on social media after Blue called Takashi 2-2 single trash and advise his fans to listen to Lil Durk's music instead. You know, I've often felt like the allegations or uh, they don't even really seem like allegations since she's posting photos of the evidence, but I've often thought that the fact that Sarah Molina was apparently beaten and raped by 6 9 kind of went under the under the radar. Like people didn't really talk about that that much and it seems like a, a very, very big deal. And uh, it's kind of nice, I guess, to see Blueface at least calling some attention to it, posting the clip from the Shade Room interview where he's just talking about beating the shit out of her. I mean, that's just another reminder of why this guy's a piece of shit. I mean, <laughs> if, if the snitching thing doesn't bother bother you, which I understand most people watching this are not in the streets. They would probably snitch if they had the chance. That's fine. But the fact that 6 9 did this horrible shit to Sarah Molina, the mother of his child, I mean, that to me really stands out. Like if you're going to be banned from Spotify and, and basically outlawed from being involved in hip hop, which it would seem like 6 9 is at this point, I would think that that would be an even better reason to not fuck with them than the snitching thing. So shout out to Blueface for raising awareness about this because real men don't beat their girl. Real man, don't beat that girl. And Wax said he got a bag. If he wants to get in the ring with the famous Crip, I know everybody would tune in to that, watching Blueface do what everybody wants to do is get hands on this motherfucker. So please sign up, no matter how much it costs, I want to see Blueface and Cub fight ASAP. 6 ix never gonna fight Blueface because Blueface is way bigger than him and I assume has better hands than him. I just, I don't think 6 9 would ever sign up for that, but you also, you notice 6 9 challenging all these different people to fight. He hasn't said anything about fighting Blueface for a very good reason because I think he knows he would get fucked up in that situation. But that would be a step forward. I think people 
don't expect him to do that shit, that kind of it's not going to ever redeem you for what you did, but it'll make niggas be like, I didn't think he was going to get in the ring. Mm, yeah, because I mean, he he really could use anything that makes him look like a man at this point, since that's really what's been taken from him is that nobody respects him as a man. So if he were to get in the ring and fight, at least then maybe you could you could see him gaining some respect from that. But then at the same time, I mean, 69's career is already over. It's already like really hard for him to get anybody to pay attention to him for any reason. Uh, he, he talks nonstop about how successful his music is and everything. Why don't you keep putting music out? You haven't dropped any music in like a year because nobody gives a fuck when you do drop. It just seems like the fight would give him like a big runway of a couple months where people would actually be interested in paying attention to him. But if he loses that fight, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's really any coming back from that. Even if he loses, the fact that he would even get in the ring mm. would speak volumes to his fan base, I know at least. I mean, you talk about all this other shit, niggas is untouchable and the streets ain't this, you know, get in the ring. And base, the basis of men, we should all be able to knuckle up without picking up guns and things of that nature. So. Blueface, beat the dog shit out of cuz. Do it for the Lokes and do it for the whole West Coast and do it for everybody. But one thing I learned from this news story is that Blueface's fight against this TikTok kid is a bare knuckle boxing match. I know, but they- That's crazy. They uh, wrap their shit up though, but it's still bare knuckle. Still, I mean, bare knuckle. Like I haven't seen, like, have, is there anything comparable to this? I've been watching like boxing and UFC my whole life. I don't know if I've ever seen like a bare knuckle fight, nah. uh, especially against a TikToker, especially two people who this is clearly their first like publicized uh, fight. I mean, that's pretty astonishing to me. Somebody could really get hurt and that makes me even more inclined to watch it. I mean, if you get into a street fight, people get hurt all the time. Mm. You got in a bar fight. Oh, many. Yeah. Yeah. Stabbed a guy with a Michelob bottle. Anyway. Allegedly. <laughs> YouTube, if you enjoyed this, do us a favor, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be back real soon. And hit up our Patreon.com slash no jumper. Appreciate y'all.